If you haven't done so yet, please pause at the video and try to answer this question yourself before listening on. What we can do first to solve this question is to draw a picture of this simple circuit. So here we have the picture of the real battery, which is outlined in red, and you'll notice that the real battery contains the classical symbol for a battery with the small line and then the larger line, and then this internal resistance that we have labeled lowercase r, and then we have the other resistor that is labeled as uppercase r. And that is the resistor that has the value of 0.10 ohms. We might come back to this symbol for the battery and label that with the symbol E for EMF. And we were told in the question that the EMF is equal to 1.5 volts, so we can perhaps label that. Now, the question tells us that thermal energy is generated at the rate of 10 watts, and we know that watts is a unit of power. We also know that power is equal to the potential difference supplied by the battery squared divided by its resistance. And by potential difference, we mean the potential difference across the resistor. So we can actually solve this equation for the potential difference across the resistor. And to do that, we'll multiply both sides of the equation by R. And then we can square root both sides of the equation. So we can now see that the potential difference across the resistor is equal to the square root of its resistance multiplied by the power that's generated through that resistor. We have the power of 10 watts, and we also have the resistance value of 0.10 ohms. So all we have to do is plug those two values in. And when we crunch that down, we should get exactly one volt. And that will represent the potential difference across the resistor and the correct answer to part A. Now part B is asking us for the internal resistance of the battery, which again is symbolized by the lowercase r. And to do that, we can actually apply Kirchhoff's loop rule. And so in that rule, we pick an arbitrary starting point within the circuit, and then we move our way around the circuit. And as we move around the circuit, we keep track of the potential changes. And so let's go ahead and start at this x and move around the circuit until we return to where we started. Now, as we move around the circuit, we encounter this resistor R. And we'll notice that we are moving in the same direction as the current that's marked with this purple arrow here. Now, whenever we move in the same direction as the current, our potential change will be negative. So we would have a negative potential change, and we can symbolize that by V. Later, we will recall that the potential change here was 1.0 volts. So we'll, be end up, we'll end up plugging that in for V. Now, as we continue our way around the circuit, we encounter this battery, and we're moving from the smaller negative plate to the larger positive plate of the battery. And when you move from negative to positive, you're going to have a positive potential change, in this case, equal to the EMF of the battery. So we could write plus the EMF of the battery. We then encounter this resistor, and again, we're moving with the current. So we're going to have a negative potential change, and that potential change is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance. So we would have that current, I, multiplied by the internal resistance, R. And then finally, when we return to where we started, we can set that total potential change equal to zero. Now, remember that we're trying to solve for the internal resistance, R, so we're going to try to rearrange the equation to isolate it. We can perhaps add the V over to the right-hand side and subtract the EMF, and that would give us negative IR is equal to V minus the EMF. And then we could divide both sides of the equation by negative I. And we can see that the internal resistance is equal to V minus the EMF divided by the negative value of the current. Now, again, we know the value of V, that was equal to one volt. We know the EMF of the battery, which is 1.5 volts, but we actually never figured out the current. That's not going to be terribly challenging. We can come back to this resistor and we can look at Ohm's law. Remember that Ohm's law says the potential difference equals the current multiplied by the resistance. If we solve this equation for the current, we would see that it's equal to the potential difference divided by the resistance. And now all we have to do is plug this expression for the current into our equation that we developed for the internal resistance. And now at this point, we can plug in all the known values. We have one volt for the potential difference across the resistor. The EMF of the battery is 1.5 volts. And then we have down here the one volt divided by the resistance of the battery, which was 0.10. So we can now just pick up our calculators and process this. 
And when we do that, we should get an internal resistance of 0.05 ohms. So this is the correct answer to part B.